Just this morning in my email inbox, I received my invitation to GOG Galaxy 2.0 closed beta. Let's take a quick look at it right now. Don't you know that you're a grown up? No gates, no puns. Not allowed if you're a grown up. Hey, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John. I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thank you for checking out this video and the rest of the channel. We've spoken several times on our audio podcast, which you should totally check out if you haven't before, about the fact that we love playing games, both current AAA titles and nostalgic ones, but there's that challenge today in a digital landscape of where you bought the game. Did I buy it in Steam? Did I buy it in Epic? Did I buy it on Origin? Did I buy it on Uplay? And you're, you kind of like get lost and you run the risk even of buying games more than once if you don't keep all those kind of up to date. I mentioned on a recent episode of our podcast that I was looking forward to a new launcher from GOG, the good old games people, called Galaxy 2.0. I signed up for the beta and this morning I got an email that said, welcome to the closed beta, go download it and get cooking, which is exactly what I did. And I want to share with you my first impressions of Galaxy 2.0. Does it live up to the hype, to the promise of aggregating all of your different platforms together in one place? Well, I sure want to know. Before we look, if this is your first time watching Gen X Grown Up, look for that little bar that lifts, subscribe button in the corner. Please give that a click, maybe even enable those notifications with that little bell. We sure would love if you did. You can check out way more of our Gen X inspired stuff. All right, no more beating around the bush. Let's take a look at Galaxy 2.0. I have GOG Galaxy installed. Give it a launch. So on first launch and login, I can see that it just knows about the games that I have in GOG. I can look at the games that I have there, which is not very many, like uh, six games. Uh, not even all the uh, cover art is here yet. I have a lot of old, good old games on good old games. At first, I thought it didn't have cover art for some of these older games. Here's another Wing Commander and Free Space, but they just took a while for them to load in. This one's still coming. Uh, so it looks like as it launches and it looks at your library, it goes out and starts scrubbing the internet looking for the cover art. Uh, but the real thing you want to do is to be able to aggregate all your games together. So let's try to add some other platforms. That's the promise of Galaxy 2.0, right? So it looks like add games and friends. So let's add connect platforms. Ah, so here are all the things it can connect to. I can see it's connected to GOG now. I can do Xbox Live. I can do Epic, Origin, PSN, Steam, and Uplay. Uh, all of which I actually have an account for. Uh, I don't use very often. PSN I rarely use. Uh, Xbox Live I haven't used in a while, but it's in Windows integrated. Uh, so let's connect some of these up and see how it looks. Let's start with Xbox Live. When you go to connect something, it will tell you what things do come in. So it brings in your library, uh, install and launch games, achievements, game time, uh, tags and hidden items. I don't know what that's for. It doesn't bring in friends list or chat from Xbox, so apparently that is not open yet. Is that coming or not? Who knows, but uh, let's connect uh, and see. As you might imagine, it pops up a login for Microsoft, so I just need to put in my credentials here. Yeah, we just to prove that we're going to let GOG have access to our Xbox Live history and information. All right, says it's connected. All right, so what's changed over here? Let's take a look at my Xbox tab. Oh, it's importing Xbox down here, look. Oh, look, oh, so it's showing me it is instantly starting to populate with the other games that I have from Xbox. Gears of War 4, which I can play here on the PC. Oh, all right, let's look at Xbox. <laughs> I haven't logged into Xbox in so long, and yet... So these are all games that I have, I guess, for Xbox that I can play on the PC, and it's gradually bringing them in. That's pretty cool. All right, uh, well, let's look at something I know I probably have played, like, uh, I don't know, Gears of War 4. Yeah. 10 hours, I played it three years ago. <laughs> Stats for it, uh, it's just some info, friends, average, just a kind of a friends leaderboard over here. I guess you can do some rating. You can install it right from here. That's pretty slick. All right, let's bring in uh, another store. I just recently started using Epic Games, so let's add Epic Game Store to it. Let's connect another platform. Hmm, Epic Game Store right there. All right, so a different set of supported functions. Looks like uh, library, install and launch, the important two. Doesn't track achievements, does track game time. Uh, all right, so the friends isn't all integrated, but uh, I don't know, again, I don't know how much they're working on it or how much it's coming, but let's do uh, connect. And a quick login. All right, connected. Et, we have an epic tab over here. It's starting to repopulate with some more games. Yeah, look at it filling out here. All right, 
let's go over to the Epic tab and see what's up. Yeah, so these are the games. So the great thing about Epic Game Store, once you're uh, logged in and you're a member, every month or so they start giving away games if you just go to the store and download it. So like I got the whole Batman Arkham series, including this Batman. Uh, what else? Everything was a free thing. Cube 2, mini, uh, all these things were... Metro 2033. These were all freebies that I just downloaded, Observer, just by going in. Uh, but I recently uh, played Control through here, Borderlands 3 through here. Uh, I had Shadow Complex from years ago, which is a fantastic game. And now it's all together. So let's go back to, uh, I guess, back to Recent, which apparently is the home screen. Yeah, and now they're all kind of merged in. So I can see my Xbox games along with my Epic games. All right, let's not stop. Let's add something else. Yeah, I have a few things with Origin. Let's do that one too. This one has quite a bit more. It has library installing, launching achievements, game time, and importing tags and hidden games, whatever that is. All right, let's connect. Uh, let's keep going. Let's add some more platforms. Uh, PSN, I don't think I have anything on there worth uh, talking about. Let's get Uplay in here. I'm going to save Steam for last because that's by far where I have the most stuff. Uh, looks pretty common, just not tracking achievements. I'm sure that has to do with the API that's available. And connected, added to the list here. Everything's updating. Importing Uplay stuff, that's pretty darn cool. Alright, here's the biggie, let's do Steam. That's gonna be the, just the bulk of what I have is currently in Steam. Yeah, so there it is. Oh, it's sucking them in, 15, 16%. Yeah, it's got a lot to bring in for Steam. Oh, and you can see the icon that shows on the side that tells you what platform. Here's one I have multiple platforms. <laughs> I definitely have a PlayStation account. Not sure what's going to come through there, but let's connect it just to get everything in here. Even less coming through from PlayStation Network. Library and achievements. You can't install and launch from here. I, I guess that makes sense because they're PlayStation games. So other than seeing your library and achievements, there's little reason to have PlayStation connected here as far as I can tell, uh, but we'll do it. I mean, every other platform is something you can play from your PC. So other things I'm observing here on this settings page, so community integrations, so there are other integrations coming. Ah, they have an API where you can write your own integrations. That's smart rather than locking it down, okay. So I've given it some time now. You can see it's still importing from Steam, I think. Uh, so across the top you can see kind of a dashboard of the different platforms, your Epic, GOG, Origin, PlayStation, Steam, Uplay, Xbox. Uh, yeah, total games, 400 and something here, you know, a smattering across the other platforms. Apparently I do have a game in PlayStation Network, we'll see what that is. Achievements, so we know it's not tracking achievements in all of them, but it has them all listed here as if maybe they will eventually track them all. Uh, and then hours played, I would be surprised. I don't know why Steam is so little. Uh, maybe it's not tracking that. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Uh, but I'll still come in. Let's go. Let's go take a look at the Steam library. Yeah. So pretty reminiscent of just the Steam library in general. You can see it's still bringing in a lot of, still bringing in games and still bringing in cover art for those games. Many of them don't even have cover art, so it's just kind of uh, it's a tile here. That's going to take a while to bring all this in. We'll come back and look maybe when it's done. Let's see what I have in PlayStation. I'm surprised that I have anything. Ah, uh, Heavy Rain. Okay, yeah, I did play Heavy Rain. That's the one thing I played on PlayStation. Uh, my handful of Uplay games. Why do I have Uplay? Because there are Uplay exclusives that I couldn't play anywhere else, so I have them in Uplay. A couple of Origin games. Uh, I don't remember why I have Origin. I guess, again, they're probably exclusives that I wanted to play. Yes, yeah, Syndicate I wanted to play, and it was an Origin exclusive. Makes sense. So all the GOG games now, they came through and populated. Cool. I have 69 games installed. Those are almost always going to be uh, Steam games at this point, I'm sure. So down the side, there are these obvious filters for platform or looking at all things or recent. I might call recent a dashboard, honestly. Shows the recently added and your rating. Uh, kind of your achievement overview recently played by friends. Uh, where do I see my friends? I haven't even seen them yet. Let's see, let's add games and friends. What can you add? Connect platforms I've done. Add friends. Invite a friend. Ah, so this is the internal GOG friends system. This is not friends from other platforms. I think I didn't see one of the ones we imported that had the ability uh, to connect the friends from that platform. So let's, uh, so we have activity, which is, looks like another type of kind of dashboard thing. And here's uh, like Epic, and it shows what platform it came from, whether I played in Epic, I played in Steam, whatnot. Uh, and then there's Store, 
which is smart. Of course, they should put their store. That's the whole point of having GOG Galaxy 2.0 is if this is the place that you play games and it no longer matters where you get your games because they're all in this one interface, why not buy from GOG, right? So, of course, they would do that. Enough of that. We need to launch some things. Let's pick some things we have installed and see how it handles launching a game. Uh, let's pick something that's pretty quick and easy to launch, maybe. Why don't we do... Uh, uh, let's do Gris. Gris is a game I played recently. So one click on it brings me to kind of a Gris landing page. And giving me some details about the game, time played, stuff like that. Alright, we'll hit play. Please wait, we're launching a Steam game, alright? So I'm guessing it's still using Steam in the background to do that, just passing data via the API to launch. And it's up and running. I mean, that was uh, I mean, standard launch time, not a big deal. So let's exit and see how cleanly it comes back to GOG. I'm sure I want to exit. Boom, we're right back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was pretty seamless. So that was a Steam game. Why don't we try to load something from, uh, oh, from Epic. I don't know what I've got in there. Uh, so here's why I would use the filter. I get it now. So I want to see just installed games, which is just a couple, not many. Uh, so let's give Control a launch. Again, to click on it takes it to my landing page, and we're going to hit play. And it's right into the game. I, I didn't even see like a launching window or anything, like it's on its way. It just was off to the races. Yep, and there's Control. All right, and let's uh, get out of Control. I'm out of control! <laughs> Exit. And we're right back. I mean, boom, it dropped directly back uh, to GOG. Yeah. Like an Xbox-style game that I can play. Uh, and that's filters. It's still filtered by uh, installed, so I could play Crackdown or Quantum Break. Let's launch an Xbox game, uh, which is just Xbox on Windows. I would expect it was just going to launch oop, right away. Splash screen, and off it goes. Yep, there's Crackdown 3. Humming along. And put out. Confirm. Right back to GOG. After a little more playing, I discovered that there's a really cool way to sort collections of games that is quite cool. Uh, so I can either go by a certain collection or I can just create a filter any way that I want. Maybe I want to search for all Batman games. So here's all the Batman games across all my platforms. I can click this little bookmark and it creates a new selection for Batman. So I can go back and say, hey, I want to find Batman, and there you go. You can further narrow it, and you could say, for example, I want to find all of the Bioshock games, but further, I just want the Bioshock games that are installed, and I can create a bookmark out of that. So now I have this ugly bookmark called BIOS installed, but you can actually rename that however you want, and I'll call it installed Bioshock games. And now you have a bookmark, even if you're over here with nothing, I can go straight to that and pull those up. That's a pretty cool way to sort your collections based on sets of games that you like to play. Yeah, so that's a quick tour of the new GOG Galaxy 2.0 that's currently in closed beta. Um, for my part, it didn't quite yet, yet live up, it's beta, didn't quite yet live up to my expectation of a full kind of one size fits all, everything in one place. The fact that the friends don't migrate over from other platforms, that leaves something to be desired. I don't need to manage another friends list. I mean, I have every platform, plus I have Discord, plus I have Slack, plus I, there's one more place to do it. But if it's worth it in the end, okay, I'd love for them to actually import those. Maybe they're working on it. Maybe it's up to the API of the vendor. Maybe like a PSN or Xbox don't allow that yet. We'll see. However, it's really nice to have one place to see where I bought things. So if I, well, I, I want to buy this game, rather than logging into five or six different places, I can look at this one interface now and go, oh, look, I already own that over on Origin. Or I know that I have accidentally done that in the past, bought a game again because it was on sale. I'm like, that's a great game. Let's buy it again. Yeah, it turns out, yeah, it's always been a great game and you own it from three years ago, John. So well done. And finally, I would love to hear what you think about this new GOG Galaxy 2.0 launcher. It's a really innovative idea. Is it worth it to you? Do you think it's something that you're going to use to aggregate together your libraries? Or not quite for you? Let me know down in the comments. I sure hope you found something to enjoy in this video. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. 
Gen X Grown Up is dedicated to bringing you new Generation X inspired videos every week. Here are a couple more you can watch right now, but for even more, subscribe and enable those notifications. And if you love what we do, we invite you to support us over on Patreon. And of course, your feedback in the comments and a quick thumbs up are always appreciated.